In December of 2022, Disney Plus released a documentary called Which Way to Stage with Idina Menzel. And I'm here to say I'm shocked at how raw and emotional it is. Hello, darlings, and welcome to Performance Perspective, where we talk about different shows, whether they're on TV or stage, and then we just share our perspectives. If you're new, hi, I'm Care Darling, and if you love musicals, then go ahead and subscribe, because that's that's what we do here. Um, but yeah, so anyways, let's talk about the documentary. Idina Menzel, Which Way to Stage is a Disney Plus documentary that follows the performer as she embarks on her 2018 tour with Josh Groban, which closes out at Madison Square Garden, which is her lifelong dream. You will get an inside look at the hours of hard work, dedication, and resilience that have gone into getting Idina Menzel to the big stage. Before answering the question, which way to stage, let's answer the question, who is Idina Menzel? Idina was born May 30th, 1971. She's known as an American actress and singer, known for her work on Broadway. Her first big break was playing Maureen Johnson in Rock Operetta Rent, which earned her a Tony Award nomination for Best Featured Actress in a Musical. She shares in the documentary about her feeling that she made it, but when her album came out, not a lot of people would come to her signings. I remember in an interview she was talking to any performer out there that when you are in a place that you don't necessarily have an opportunity to be on stage, make the opportunity yourself. If it's a stage, if it's a small gig, the most important thing to do is keep putting yourself out there. In 2003, Menzel originated the role of Alphaba in the Broadway musical Wicked, for which she won the Tony Award for Best Actress in a Musical. Idina began transitioning to film and television roles in the early 2000s, after reprising her role as Maureen in Rent's 2005 film adaption. She was cast as Nancy Tremaine in Disney's musical fantasy film Enchanted, which she reprised her role in 2022, the sequel known as Disenchanted. We talked about that on this channel, and listen, I think she stole the show, especially when it gets to her song, which is Love Power, stole the show. Idina has voiced Elsa in Disney's Frozen franchise. Let It Go, a song she recorded for the film, became a pop culture phenomenon. I don't think this is the first time she had a pop culture phenomenon. I mean, Defying Gravity, <laughs> Gravity, sorry, Defying Gravity to me was everywhere. And when Rent the Movie came out, everyone wanted to be Maureen. But I, I can see how Let It Go was universal. And no matter who you are, the song just associates, I don't know, I feel like Defying Gravity is like that too. I don't know. What do you think was the biggest pop culture reference and why? Was it Defying Gravity? Um, anything from Rents? Actually, no, I'm changing that. I think it's between Defying Gravity and Let It Go. Which one do you think was a bigger pop culture reference for you? Idina in the documentary explores her hometown and opens up about feeling a sense that if you stand out, you'll be bullied. She's a great example that you can be a rocker, a pop star, a Broadway legend all at once. But it did cause people around her wanting to label her and market her as one thing. When Menzel was 15 years old, her parents divorced and she began working as a wedding and bar bat mitzvah singer. Uh, apparently the parents decided to go ahead and tell Idina and her sister on Thanksgiving. In the documentary, they do portray this as funny, but I think that it's because there was time for them to heal and try to move on on that day. But because of that, Idina, now whenever something good happens, she feels a sense that it's not there to stay because when the divorce was announced to her, she felt blindsided. So now she prepares for bad news, so then she's not blindsided again. The divorce came as a shock to Idina and her sister, but because it was a holiday, they went to the hotel to prove a point that even though they are separating, they are still family. 
And that's the hotel that Idina had to go multiple times when hired as a singer. Ultimately, this documentary is interesting because you get to see a lot of Idina's breakout moments, but only for there to be a lackluster aftermath. Whether you're a longtime fan of Idina Menzel or you just discovered her work for the first time, Idina Which Way to Stage is sure to be an inspiring and enlightening watch. Here are a few highlights that you'll see in the film. One, uh, you go on her IVF journey. This was the most unexpected thing to me in the documentary. Uh, you do learn about how she met her second husband and her first husband was Tay Diggs and they had a son. The second highlight, well, I would say it's a low light. It's when she visits LA, which I will say I did laugh because she opens the window and it's like, that's Marina Del Rey, girl. <laughs> This section of the documentary is interesting because it shows footage of her not able to get in her own concert because she's not on the list. I have to say watching that experience for her was devastating and no Idina, I don't think it was your ego. I really don't. I think it's it's horrible <laughs> what they did. They, oh, I'm giving it away, but essentially they were like, well, you're not on the list. And then they start calling her, oh, this is Josh Groban's wife. And she's like, I'm not his wife. I'm the performer, which to me, Yes, it is gross. I don't think it is a sense of entitlement. This upsets me because I just don't understand how it could go wrong. I can understand if it was a band name and they didn't know the individual's name that's within the band, but it's her name on the marquee. And I just, again, I don't get it. The third highlight I wanna point out is, oh my gosh, she is such a good mom. There are decisions she makes that she thinks of her son first versus her needs. For example, she cried about missing Walker and how she wanted to fly him out over the weekend to join her tour. But Walker plays a sport, so she would be taking him away from something he enjoys. Okay, so before, you know, this channel and stuff, I've been a nanny for two decades and I've worked with kids. And I feel like a lot of parents don't actually see the bigger picture whenever they want to see the kids. So I'm going to be using Idina as an example. So let's say I'm her nanny because ultimately someone would need to travel with the child and make sure they eat, finish homework. Most likely I would have to pack everything, including devices. Guys, when I travel, I don't mess around. I have the little scale thing to weigh the luggage. I have the little packs of what I put my clothes in. Like, I do not mess around. So anyways, let's just say it's for the weekend because the child has school. We fly in Friday, we see mom, we might go get dinner, they'll watch a movie, but most likely mom might have a rehearsal or go to dinner with people that are in that city. Saturday is concert day, so we would be on set, but he might not care that his mom is singing and stuff. So we would be in a different room and I, as the nanny, would be trying to entertain him or get homework done or whatever it is. And pretty much what's going on is that we are waiting for the parent to be done with their thing to go and visit the, the child. And so the child essentially is just kind of like, the, is just, the kid is waiting, you know? But yeah, there might be an opportunity for them to have lunch. Then concert afterwards, go celebrate with everyone and try to bring the child. But you know, he gets bored and wants to go. Sunday, we need to head back because school is the next day. So maybe a fun early activity, but mom might be exhausted. So then they just stay in the hotel and watch a show and, and yeah. So you might be thinking, oh, Care, do you think it's wrong? No, I don't think it's wrong, but it is selfish. And I can understand that parents want to see their kids, but again, it's selfish because it's more about what the parents want versus what the child actually needs. Um, essentially, she's going to be very busy and then the child is just going to be waiting for her and her attention isn't necessarily going to be about the child. It's more like, hey, how are you doing? How are things? Quickly, and then you gotta be off. 
Idina doesn't do that and sees the bigger picture, which I have mad respect for because it's difficult to be a mom and live your dream is an unfair balance that you constantly need to tend to. Anyways, darlings, that's it for today's episode. Let me know if you watch the documentary on Disney+. Plus. Also, do you have a favorite Idina Menzel role? Mine is when she was Nancy in Enchanted and Disenchanted, but it's only because in the first movie, I think she's supposed to say, oh, that's so romantic, but she says, that's so romantic. <laughs> And that was it. I was sold. I was like, I like Nancy. So yes, I would love to know that. And like I asked earlier about define gravity or let it go. Which one do you think was like the bigger pop culture reference for you in your life? And yeah, without further ado, take care, darling.